alive. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, but my hair is so dead. Look at this. I don't know what I've done since the 80s. I can't find a good hairstylist. I got to call Beetlejuice on this one. Keeping your laboratory tidy isn't easy to do these days, but with just a few hints and not a lot of money, I can show you how to take an ordinary old mason jar and turn it into something like this. Hello, welcome. I'm Indy Annie Jones, Indy as in Indie Films, which I love to work in with students. Um, but today I'm Dr. Indy Anna Von Jones, and I'm celebrating one of the holidays I love the most Christmas. No, Halloween. This is my Halloween segment, and I just wanted to teach you a few tricks to make anything ordinary into something special, and especially for Halloween. Say, an old mason jar, something like this. Take it and make it spooky in just a few steps, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So what do you think we need first? Um, a jar would be nice. Yeah, a glass jar, any kind of glass jar. It could be a candle jar, it could be a mayonnaise jar, it could be an olive jar, it could be a tomato sauce jar, you know, a jar, anything that's glass. It could even be a bottle. Well, like a beer bottle, wine bottle. That all works out fine. Anyway, so you take your jar and you're like, but Dr. Jones, how do you get this label? Did you have to like get to a special printer? No, you just go on the internet and you find a whole bunch of different labels out there. Templates just like this. Now. You can go out into the store and buy some special paper. Don't do it. You don't even have to do that because it's a lot of fun to antique this. So you take your little label paper, cut out a label just like this one. See, it's on white paper. Then you take some coffee grounds or, a, you know, tea bag grounds, whatever. And you mix in, mush it in with an old toothbrush. Yeah, preferably an old one, not one you're going to use again. Preferably not one that belongs to any of your family members either. Unless, of course, you know, you have issues with them. Anyway, take a teaspoon of coffee grounds, teaspoon of water, zhuzh it up, and then you take it, and all that gooey gookiness, you just mush it all over. What we're doing is antiquing it. It'll get a little wet, it'll get a little messy, but that's what you want after all. So here's your label. And if you're really creative, you can add a little bit of wax to it too. All you have to do is, as I've done here on this bottle, is pour it right on. But before we do that, we need to glue this onto the jar. I use Fix-All Adhesive from, yes, you guessed it, the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree has this amazing glue, and it's only a dollar. So this Fix-All Adhesive adheres to everything. So just put a few dots. Boom, 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 whoop, boom, boom. And you just plop it onto the jar, just like that. So you slap that label on right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there you have it. So to make this a little more special, because anybody can buy a jar like this in the store, take a piece of wax paper, put it underneath your jar, and then take some wax, any color wax, now I suggest no kids do this because you will get burnt. I also suggest no adults do this because you will get burnt. But it looks nice anyway. <laughs> just turn the candle over and while the wax is still hot, just melt the wax all over. And you see, it looks completely different. And that's how I did this bottle here and some of the other bottles here in our display. So you're done with your label on the apothecary jar and you've added the wax or you've decided not to add the wax because you've burnt your fingers enough already. Now let's take it another step further. How? I'm gonna go back to the Dollar Tree. You get these cool little things. Yeah, they're candle holders. Nobody really uses tapered candles anymore. Watch, after I do this, you're gonna go and get like 10 of these. 
So you take your apothecary jar, which used to be a candle jar, take the top off because you're going to need it to balance it. And right here, you're going to use, guess what, the fix-all adhesive. From where? Yeah, the Dollar Tree, all over again. So you're going to take this, schmuzz it on there, take your little candle holder, and usually I let it rest for a little while. But I'm going to turn it over and see what happens. And it'll probably fall apart, but no, it doesn't because it's madness. And there you go. Now, that is an apothecary display I think anybody will be very proud of. Again, you can stick anything you like in there, cover it up, and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Or maybe he's not. Maybe it's Carlos or Tito or, or something like that. But you, know, you get my drift. So there is a special apothecary jar. But wait, we can do some more. <clears throat> So how can we take this simple little candlestick and just push it a little bit further, make it a little more spooky? I'll show you. You take this and a bottle of acrylic paint. Acrylic paint, you say, oh my goodness, what is that? It's those little paint bottles that you get at your local Walmart or any craft store out there. They're like 50 cents to a dollar each, no big deal. Or if you want, you can spray paint these. It's so simple. And it turns out like this. So this looks so much classier. And remember, not only can you do it in black, you can do it in any color you want, pink, blue, purple, what have you. Then, go back to the Dollar Tree. You're gonna be going to the Dollar Tree a lot with me. And they have these beautiful black plates. Isn't that spooky? It's so spooky, I just don't know what to do with myself. It's so spooky. So, doing the same process. Just gonna put the plate down so it doesn't break. I'm gonna shush it with a fix-all adhesive. Oh, I'm not looking. Who is that? Shush! Okay, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. They're hungry. Anyway, so you just put some glue on. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And you take your little candle holder, zhuzh it on, and wait. You would leave it s still for at least, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, just until it's dry. And there it is. So can you imagine having all your cool little goodies and spooky stuff right here on this lovely plate? This is just one other little trick that you could do with that fix-all adhesive. And you can do it with anything. You can look around and see all the different ways that I use these little pedestals. And it just makes such a big difference. And if you want to, you can add layers. So you can have three tiers making it look gorgeous. I mean, even like Martha Stewart would be jealous. She is. Look at my hair. <laughs> laughing maniacally isn't all it's cracked up to me anyway I've made a gift for my precious lab assistant Igor 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 come here kid I've made you this Homemade, yummy, delicious slime. Slap it down there. See if you like playing with it. Look at that. It doesn't, doesn't stick to things. And you can mush it up all you want. Ooh, it, it makes weird noises. So we're going to learn how to make this, Igor. So here, put away your slime, and we'll start a new batch. You can color it any color you want. And this is super fun to do with the kids. Do it in the schools. It's super cheap as well. First. You're gonna need two bowls. One bowl, two bowls. Then you're gonna need a whole bottle of white glue. Doesn't have to be Elmer's. If you have Elmer's, that's fine. It's, you know, it's cool. But if not, you can have this, and it comes two per pack at the Dollar Tree, once again. Then you're gonna need something from way back yonder in the yesteryear, something called borax. And this is 20 Mule Team Borax. I mean, if I'm gonna buy Borax, I definitely want to have the 20 Mule Team Borax. You know, after 20 mules, God knows what's left behind. So anyway, so let's get started. And the only other ingredient we need is H2O, agua. There it is. So we're gonna start. 
first, we're going to make our first solution in the big bowl, correct? So here, Igor, I want you to pour all the glue into the solution. And it has this little safety cap thing. I don't know why, but it's annoying. And there it is. Boop. Whatever. Okay, so pour it into the big bowl there. Yes. Okay, cool. Igor today is being portrayed by Luke. Pour it all in. Pour it all in. Then, because, you know, I don't care about measurements much. Is it all poured in? Let's watch the glue pour in. Shall we? Is it done? All right. That's pretty much done. Yeah, we're not patient enough for it, to wait for it, so you don't have to be patient enough for it either. So you're going to stick the water, you know, just pour it in to the bottle of glue, bottle of glue. There you go, oh my goodness, oh my, it's a little overboard, that's okay. And then you gotta cover it and shake it. Shake it, shake it, Igor. All right, okay, that's just to get all the leftover glue out of there. And you just, go ahead, kiddo, pour it in. Opa, great stuff. Then, we're going to take some food coloring, any food coloring you'd like, and you just dump it in. Ooh, one more? Okay, cool. Mix. While he's doing that, that's a weird way of mixing, kid, but whatever works for you. While he's doing that, I'm going to get the borax liquid ready. And this is kind of, yeah, you feel around to see how you want to do it. So you take a tablespoon, or a teaspoon, I should say, um, of water. So basically, I'm going to take, what, like um, half a cup of water. Kind of warm, lukewarm. Just pour it in. Whoop. Now we're going to take about a teaspoon, try it first a teaspoon, is that a teaspoon? Yeah, that's a tisp, teaspoon. And yeah, that really worked well. So yeah, well, you know, you get my drift. It's borax 20 mules, so I think I got like 19 mules in there that I didn't really need. That's all right. Then we just mix it, mix it, mix it. <laughs> and then you're gonna need this bag, buddy. Take this. And then, like Julia Child, we just, we're like, I'm breaking up the little borax pieces there. Try to get it dissolved, more or less. We're just going to pour it in for time's sake. So, okay. So, then it does this thing. Go. You can see this? So, it becomes like from a liquid, that it was like liquidy, watery kind of glue. It becomes goo. So, here, I'm going to mix some more. Hold it there, kiddo. A little more, a little more, a little more borax. All right, ooh, look at that. Ah. Oh, this is fun. Okay, now get your hands in there, get dirty. Get messy. It's so much fun. This is really fun for the kids. Bring it all the way out. Blah. 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 I love it. Oh, slimy. This stuff is so wonderful because you know what? You can do anything with it. You want to make zombie guts? Make it red and put some like worms in there you get at the Dollar Tree. Or you can make it yellow, like goldeny slime like we had before. Or you can make it like really cute and cosmic-y and like add some glitter to it because that's like so cute. And you can make it like rainbow bright, okay? So you can mix colors. You can do anything you like. A box of borax costs you around like four bucks, five bucks, whereas you would buy just one packet of this slime, it costs you that much. You can make like, what, like 20, 25 things of slime or more, 100 maybe. So you can like give this out to your friends or throw it at them, whatever you want to do. Then here, take your slime. And then you just put it away. And you just put it in an airtight container like Tupperware or something classy like what I have here. 
an old candle holder with a rubber top, and voila. And you just pour it into any container, especially a nice glass container like this. Well, what's fun is having a Halloween party and having a lot of different food colors and glitter and worms and having the kids make their own slime that they can take home at the end of the day. Doesn't cost much, but the memories are well worth it. Hope you try this at home and tell me about it in the comments below. Really? Or you can walk in, or let him walk in, not pop up. So. I like to walk in better. Okay, walk in, like just slunk, slunk in, like. <sighs> Hi, this is my creature. I made him. Like really, seriously, I did. But anyway, welcome creature. This is the show. We yeah, okay. Anyway, we're gonna make food, creature. Food, food, creature. Okay. So we're gonna make let them eat dirt cake cups. Really easy, really fun. Again, something you can do with your kids, something you can do on a Halloween night or a night before or whatever. It's a lot of fun. But this is what it looks like in the end. What you're gonna need is some ooey gooey red velvet cake. It could be leftover cupcakes from like, I don't know, last time you had a bake sale at the school and you didn't sell enough because you didn't cook it right. No, no, we're not going to say that. No, no, it's really good, delicious, moist red velvet cake, all mushed up. Then we're going to have some brownie mix. Brownie. Ha ha. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I need some cups. So you get your clear plastic cups. Yeah, you get them at the Dollar Tree, too. Anyway. Anywhere, literally, you can find these anywhere. But we'll use one for today. Then you can add some goo. Well, not really. It's just chocolate syrup. Soft chocolate syrup. Or strawberry syrup, just for that bloody mess that you're gonna make. And you're gonna take some Oreo cookies because you can't eat them, because the doctor said, no, you can't eat any more Oreo cookies. So you take the Oreo cookies, take them apart, Scrape off the inside. Not like with your tongue or anything. No, that's disgusting. Take it off with a knife and then crumple up the chocolate Oreos. Or, or get some graham crackers like this one. And that's gonna be your sand and your dirt right there. It's delicious. And what else? What else do we have here? Then we got some pudding for some mud. And we got some gummy bears. No, they're not gummy bears, no. They're Sour Patch Gummy Worms. Eats monster. No monster doesn't want. The other thing I love to add to this also because it's red velvet is I make my own little cream cheese frosting. Now all I do is take a package of cream cheese, mix it with some confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. It's delicious. So these are all the ingredients you need. So basically, here creature, make your cake. Take a little bit of each thing and this is how you make it. Don't use bowls, just stick it all in bags. Take a little bit of red velvet cake. He's so excited, look at him. Any creature, put it there, mush it. Take some brownie. Take the brownie. Now mush it. <laughs> creature, did you hear that? Oh, good creature. Oh, he's mushed it up together. Look at that. Okay, okay, stop with the mushing. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's like Play-Doh of cake. So good creature, do that. Now go, look. Now you take this creature. Yummy. And then you take this creature. Ah, pudding. You know why I'm adding the chocolate pudding? This is an homage to Carl. Coral, because Carl only wanted his chocolate pudding in a can. So Carl, this is for you. That's from The Walking Dead. And then let's get some sand in there. Ooh, some sand. And, and, and then some dirt. Creature's doing really well, don't you think? Good yeah. creature. Good creature. Creature doesn't listen to half of the things I say. That's why I like him. He just lets me do all my crazy experiments and stuff. He don't care. What else? Do you want some, do you want some chocolate syrup? Chocolate syrup, chocolate syrup, creature. Chocolate syrup. 
and then and then some worms and then we add some worms and there you have it and there you have let them eat dirt cakes with the sour bright crawlers so when you have all those little critters around just pop in some and this is easy i'm not going to go through the emotions of how to make a brownie mix it's at the dollar tree you follow the instructions same thing with the red velvet cake vanilla cake any kind of cake carrot cake whatever cake you want to do you can make anything you want that's the beauty of art isn't it it's your creation it's your creation it's alive okay so I hope you enjoyed this first segment celebrating Halloween. Seriously. I love to craft, I love to do things for Halloween, but I get so much inspiration from film. So while you're making your mad lab, your mad scientist lab and costume, why don't you watch a few of these films? For example, one of my favorite mad scientists is Victor von Frankenstein from Young Frankenstein, a classic comedy that everyone should watch, and it's a great family film. One of my favorite, most beloved mad scientists is, of course, Doc Brown from Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3. They're celebrating their 30th anniversary this year. So yeah, this would be the time that Marty would be going back to the future. Another wonderful mad scientist is Doc Octopus and Doctor Doom as well. So any one of those superhero films are great to watch. There are so many mad scientists. How about one that you probably totally forgot about? How about Doctor Krakatus? Who the heck is Doctor Krakatus? Well, he's the one who invented Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. How could we possibly forget him? And of course, my other favorite, favorite mad scientists are all those wonderful guys in the lab that decided to take some amber and get some DNA from some mosquitoes and build some big dinosaur monsters to eat us all. Yeah, those are the ones I really love. And of course, we can't forget the docs, the crazy scientists who became the Ghostbusters. So enjoy your films, enjoy your family, and enjoy the fun of Halloween. And I'll see you next time right here.